Welcome to the Invisible Man. Um, Ryan Jans can't uh, be here today. He's got other uh, um, other uh, things going on. My name is Mark David Stallard, and the lovely lady on my right <laughs> is uh, um, right. Carrie Loose oh, Forsyth, no. uh, Loose from Load. Hi, Loose. How you no, doing? How are you? Pretty good. It's like you know what we were joking with Phil and Ryan actually uh, uh, it was a couple of days ago uh, that you are pretty much the de facto host now, right? It's like you've been on the show so many times now. Well, fact, it's like you... um, we used to be like the the co-host all the time for the late night show. <laughs> David Letterman, I'm I'm going for that. I, I want to be the regular co-host. Yeah, well, and it was too. It was a uh, it was a last minute. I just got back from England um, on Tuesday. Oh, let's do a show, and it was ah, oh, let's uh, who can invite? We had to have loose on again, and yeah, so sure enough. Uh, so no, it's going to be a bit of fun show, a little uh, less structured than the other shows where you've been guest of honor. Uh, Phil Bishop uh -oh. Pibio, everyone, it's is going to be joining show. us. <laughs> oh, what, sorry? It's loose. Loose. <laughs> yes, indeed. It'll be loose. Uh, very, very. That's my notes. There we go. Anyhow, you can't see them, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we've actually been, um, um, I think it was a few weeks ago, I think, since we last spoke. Um, yeah. yeah. And I've noticed online that you've had got a couple of, at least one, one project coming up or uh, uh, something called the Cranky Festival. And tell Cranky us all your posts. November 8th to 10th. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, a yearly festival uh, here in Manitoba, um, started by Mitch Podolik, who is also the founder of the Folk Festival and many CBC radio programs and just many folk roots oriented um, programs. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. So, um, Load is playing. Um, some folk versions of a lot of our stuff yeah. and i'm going to be actually i'm actually going to be giving a essential oil and a medicinal plant workshop at this festival as well oh, okay like, i don't know if I said it's november 8th to 10th but at different times from the music right, right now. i don't different... know if you can tell i'm i'm walking <laughs> <laughs> but here i just wanted to show you the beautiful students in the apothecary hello everyone great medicinal plant work <laughs> and studying to help their families and <laughs> Generations. Y'all smoking weed in there? There's no smoking weed right now. Oh, okay. That's part of the castle. That's right not in broken apothecary. <laughs> <laughs> they do support each other, but <laughs> you guys are naughty. You heard all the ladies laughing. <laughs> well, is it laughing or they just giggling with glee? I'm gonna go upstairs in Cannabis Castle and we can talk about that later. But <laughs> yeah. I you know, um, I'm, I'm renowned in my field for medicinal plants. I have studied for over 30 years and I have the largest apothecary in North America that supplies essential oils and herbs to people, uh, especially um, cannabis extracts and things too like that. So oh. we have, uh, we like to help people here. Indeed. That's a noble, noble effort there. Um, actually, when I uh, first heard about the Cranky Festival, which I think was literally a few days ago, you, you've been posting on online. Um, now, this yep. is actually, um, this or this year it is dedicated to Mitch, and I didn't get his name, one of the founders of the... Mitch Podolik. Mitch Podolik. Um, the festival is um, a celebration of his life and accomplishments and achievements. And um, it's something he started before he passed away. And he passed away in what most people think are kind of unfortunate circumstances. He had an injury and it led to further complications in the hospital because of understaffing and problems in the, in our, in our medical system. Um, he had a burst bowel and nobody knew about it. And he really suffered. He suffered a lot in the end of his life. And for all the amazing things that he's done in this world, it just didn't seem a fitting end. So we really want to just take Mitch's work further and um, get back to our roots mm -hmm. and celebrate in the, in the Cranky Festival way. So Lode is really happy to be there and a part of it. Nice. Um, what was, sorry, when was Lode playing again, you did say? 
You know what? I don't know if we're. Oh, I don't know if you didn't we're, say. I don't know. <laughs> it, we're. I don't know. Well, it's about the best I can tell you. I think I closed. I did have the page open, and I think I closed it. So well, we'll look at that. Yeah, later. you know, I didn't. I don't even. If the schedule is out, I haven't seen the exact schedule. So sorry for well, being sketchy. Oh yeah, I guess we're, we're, a, we're a month or so away. Okay. It'll be on yeah. the uh, November eighth, ninth, or tenth. I think we can be pretty certain on that. That's right. It'll be the eighth or the ninth. <laughs> okay, but not the tenth. All right. Okay. Oh, Sounds good. Um, oh, that's when it'll be, but... oh, sorry. What was that? I <laughs> said that'll probably be when it'll be. <laughs> probably now, right? Um, yeah. Now, actually, this was being run by uh, Home Routes or Home Routes. Yeah, and Home Routes is one of the radio programs that Leonard uh, started. Yeah. Now, uh, they're involved with um, helping people set up uh, um, uh, like uh, um, home concerts and stuff. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was kind of looking at this this morning, and like, I think I've gone through their site uh, several times looking for a. Hints oh. and tips on uh, house concerts and stuff, yeah. So I did my first one, um, my first house concert, actually, uh, just uh, last week, week before last, which was a lot of fun. Anyway, so we'll talk that, about that later. That in, was that overseas or was that here? Yeah, that was in England, yeah. Yeah, it was basically uh, oh, that's family, great. family and friends. Oh, yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was basically families and family and friends, so uh, well, I didn't make much, if any, money on it. There we go. Um, <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. The first time I'd done it, and it was probably one of the easiest... Uh, audiences because I could actually pick on them. Um, so we, we set up in the backyard and I was a little, it was a blisteringly hot day. It was um, what, mid twenties. Uh, that's um, centigrade there for you, Phil. You have to do the translation. Um, and it was, it was, it was blisteringly hot and I wasn't going to go um, and in front of everyone wiggling with my guitar, you know, with my shorts on. So I had jeans, black jeans, which is all I took with me and a um, t-shirt and I refused to put my jacket on. And I ended up being about twenty feet away. From, <laughs> I went about twenty feet away from them because we were in the backyard, uh, so I could be under a tree, a shadow of a tree. Uh, and even then, it was um, you know you could kind of see it dripping off. But it was a lot of fun. Um, I, as usual, I uh, modified my set as I played it, really seeing how people were reacting. But it was a lot of fun. I could actually pick up people by name, and I knew exactly who they were. And there was a lot, you know, and you can say, "Hey, stop talking," or. I'd have a story about sure. someone that I could say. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually, I, mean, I'm, I definitely am keen to do those again, those house concerts. And I really like those. Yeah, well, we have a beautiful facility here at the castle. We do home concerts yeah. and special filmings and things. It's just, mm. you know, sometimes you get the right location and it's yeah. awesome. And it's nice to be in an intimate surroundings. You know, you yeah. don't always have to be in a bar setting. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the, uh, the intimate uh, settings more, I think, for the most yeah. part. And I still would like to play the MTS Centre to a crowded room. Yes, um, okay, well, we'll be, <laughs> we will. Because, uh, and uh, speaking of that, you know, the documentary Canadian Homegrown yeah. that featured Lode in it that came out this summer um, has just been picked up by Shaw Television. Oh, excellent. And, and I think they're going to well, make it into a series. So <gasps> that the, the, our, our show was the pilot. Excellent. Uh, so Ken Loxton, who was the director, is actually going to be on our show in a couple of weeks. He's agreed to be on. So that's the 12th for everyone. Yeah, that's um, good. So that'll be a lot of fun. That's great. Um, I'll, I'll be sure to be here. I'll be around for that. Yeah, that'll be good. And we'll, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, it's going to be the first time we've had a director because we're not just, the Visible Man's not just about uh, promoting musicians, but this, uh, we're interested in or the entire music industry and anything that helps the independent music industry. industry and that, we want to push, right? That's like Ken. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks for being on the show. Wouldn't be it the same without you. The, uh, the with our with our, our, our new co-host. <laughs> um, I just, 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 <laughs> just, just, you can get away now. That's it. <laughs> it just happened. She's yeah. in now, you guys. She's oh. in. <laughs> I'm the co-co. Co co I, I think. So, I think right? from that first co -co time we met, I think we knew we were going to be working. With, we knew we were going to be working uh, on lots of things together. I think. Uh, fairly soon didn't we yeah that's um, Which is well good. you know we're really excited yeah we're very excited about our new show that's coming up that mm -hmm. you know next week is our i think our final production meeting for the cannabis castle i don't know if it's going to be the canadian cannabis castle or the <laughs> cannabis castle well, you want to refresh my memory <laughs> that's actually before you go on let's just a quick shout out to a couple of uh, viewers here. um so we got uh, peggy oh, kim uh, has joined us in canada she says, and Catherine uh, McGoy yes. 
from Hi. Fleetwood in England has uh, joined us. So, hi guys, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. Anyhow, so back Hello. to the conversation. Okay. Luz, can you explain to me that cannabis thing? I, I caught a little <laughs> bit of it, but I don't know the whole thing. So, so we are starting a variety show that is an internet variety show that involves local musicians and cooking whole food, organic and vegan food combos with uh, specialty chefs who create uh, creations with cannabis infused oils, butters, cannabis right into food, there's different types of things. So you may have seen some um, cooking shows on television or on the internet right now where they have chefs and people tasting and, and discussing whether they like the, the flavor and how they feel afterwards. And so we want to do that, but we want to take it just maybe one step further. Um, the, the musicians the, or the panel people that we've invited are all local musicians and they will be required to come together at the end of the show um, and to work out a cover tune of the audience's choice. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe under the influence of delicious edibles. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty funny. And we think it's actually very um, inspirational and creative, but we'll see. It could all fall apart. <laughs> and that <might> be <laughs> now, are you doing this on uh, Facebook Live or? Uh, yeah, there's going to be a few formats um, for it. And that's what we're going to be working out this week. And mm -hmm. we believe the Invisible Man is going to be a big part of that. And yeah, Ken Lawson so. is a part of that. And we will. Um, We've got some bloggers and some other people involved and we'll be moving just forward as, as we can so um, hey. next month we start by the end of the month we will be filming and we have a really neat group of musicians that are up for the challenge and uh, i think it'll be funny and also when you if you've been to the castle you know we have some interesting instruments here like we have a big um, pump organ and uh -huh. kyle the guitar player for load can play it and so he even can play the friendly giant theme song oh, <laughs> and different nice. things. Uh, so we really hope to have some uh, put a little variety side to it and and show some very wacky retro things that that inspire us and make us laugh if we're a little bit high on edibles too. You know, life should so be good. That's when are you going want. to be doing these uh, shows? Um, we start filming like maybe three weeks. Oh, cool! Um, and then here, of course, at the castle. You should send me an MP3 promotional thing so I could run it on the show. I will. I will. We, we're just getting it all together, so I, I promise we will. We've got. We put our call out. We have our. We have most of our staff, and everything's going to be pretty cool. I think right we're on. gonna. We're gonna. Shoot, we're gonna shoot a pilot and a few follow up and go from there. So we'll see what happens. Well, right on. It's gonna be fun. Maybe a really cool lot of it, like the Cannabis Castle song. You know, you never know. Well, <laughs> There's CCR, but this will be CCS. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Speaking of such, uh, I'm going to step out. I'm going to go downstairs to the garage, and uh, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm listening, though, so you don't talk wait. about me. You can't, like, you can't get through the show. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> back in a bit. <laughs> back in a bit. Phil's on a tight oh. bed. <laughs> okay, so, so get... Mark. Yes. Tell me about England. You were in England. Yeah, you just so, got back. I just got back from Mexico. So I don't think our weather was the same. No, it was actually uh, <laughs> quite nice, actually. Uh, it hardly rained at all. Uh, although uh, I have been okay. told that the weather has been changing and it's not been as wet over on that side of the pond. Uh, really? in recent years. Yeah. Wouldn't that be special? Mm -hmm. um, and of course. That's like you know, a part of climate change that I'm, I'm, I love. You know, the, <laughs> we're not going to get political about climate change, but what we are going to say say is that the little bit of science that we can all grasp we know that since like 2012 mm -hmm. the earth has shifted on its axis a few degrees mm -hmm. and so that new polarity and that new shift has got to change the weather patterns by a few you know latitude and longitude across the globe yeah. so it doesn't it's not um surprising that this may be happening and what we should really be looking at is like how do we capitalize and how do areas that maybe couldn't grow Grow, grow now areas that used to grow something can grow something else you know the earth has got a beautiful way to balance itself and we poison it and we pollute it and we disrespect it in so many places right. that maybe it just had to shift so that other areas would get a chance to be destroyed <laughs> and the other Possibly. areas would get a chance to be yeah. rejuvenated like i don't know do you know what i'm saying yeah actually i don't know where i look at too is whether you whether you believe the science or not um 
polluting the the uh, the um, our environment has got to be bad. Um, and regardless of what the outcome is, they're, they're, nothing's going to come good of putting your garbage into the atmosphere. And I've, I've always kind of looked yeah. at that um, as well. I was like, you know, you... And it, isn't, it is. It's a no-brainer. I don't even know why we have to discuss it or yeah. even quantify it. You know, it's like yeah. we should stop polluting. And we should accept that the earth maybe changes in ways over time and in cycles that we should now start anticipating. Right. And as we see these changes, instead of panicking and like if we're going to collect money, if we're going to have taxes, like let's be proactive about it. Let's not bullshit yeah. people. Let's like look at the globe. Let's look at the whole hierarchy of, of farming. Let's look at all the things that this affects right. and make some rational decisions, you yeah, know, choices. Sure. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's no doubt things are. Things are changing, um, and again, really, this is has become politicized. But this isn't a political topic. This is yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not is. even political. <laughs> it's more like astrology and astronomy yeah. and the planets and Earth and what yeah. we're doing and response. It's, you know, like I don't basic know. and then some of it is out of our control completely. It's just basic housekeeping, right? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I think, the Earth, I think the Earth should do some housekeeping. Yeah. It needs to kick the shit out. Of a few areas you know <laughs> and that's what's happening because it's that's what happens you abuse anything right you yeah. abuse a person they fight back you abuse the earth it fights back man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt yeah so um yeah um uh, unusual uh, when i was uh preparing to go i was thinking it was going to be raining the whole time you know, my experience from 30 years ago it rained all winter and you would have you know weeks and weeks and weeks of rain or like non-stop yeah. uh, apparently that doesn't happen anymore um I'm so from was, British Columbia. I'm from Vancouver and Vancouver Island. So I'd be interested to know if people report that. Yeah. There. So it was, um, it yeah. So it was a uh, very, very similar weather to that we were um, having back here, back home. Um, and by the way, everyone, when I say back home, I mean here in Winnipeg. This is where. Okay. Um, so when everyone ever says, how often do you get home? I usually answer, well, every night, because that's where I live. You know, it's yeah, a silly question. It's a silly home question. Home. <laughs> um, I home every day. And, and home's where your heart is, where my heart's here as well. You know, so anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, so I, the weather was back, it was basically the same. It was uh, sunny and it was, you know, uh, like low 20s, low to mid 20s. Um, um, yeah, I got to do, I did almost nothing, which was great. If I had, because uh, I went with me and my son. And yeah, we went to this, I, I just, when I go there, I just go to see the local, the local sites. So we got Titchfield Abbey and the, the village where I grew up, Titchfield, um, which is a, you know, uh, built in the Middle Ages. It was in, in the dunes with the books. It's an old village. Uh, so we walk around there. Stuff that I hated doing as a kid because we did had to do it for school, right? Isn't uh, to that learn funny? The, to learn it's all the little bits of that. That's, a, yeah, that's an insurance plaque. This is from Tudor, the, the tower on the church is Roman. Like, um, But now I, I spout it back. And I, you know, we learned that stuff when I was like six or seven. Um, hated it at the time, and then we go to uh, all the other all the other places. So that was actually quite a nice. Uh, uh, just I do the same, pretty much do the same thing every time I go over. Um, and then um, my uh, my son's girlfriend joined us um, about a week later, and then he was off with her to, up to London. Left me to do sweet nothing on my own, which was great. I had a, a hang out with my dad for the day, which is the first time we've done that I think in about thirty years. So that was good. Uh, so I sat in his wow. workshop while he was uh, doing MOTs on motorbikes. And then it was a slow day, so it was good. Lots of chat. Went out for lunch. Um, so it was a it was a good all round fun, yeah. Um, and uh, the, I think the big the highlight for me, I think, as far as uh, well, other than the family stuff, which was great, was a show I did actually up in near Leeds. Um, actually, where you know, I've got a picture of that uh, the post. I think I, yeah, here we go. I do this. Here we are. So that's one I, uh, I I had this on the show last time promoting it. So Wakefield. Uh, just, just south of Leeds, which is in Yorkshire, which is a four and a half hour drive. And uh, um, I had no idea what to expect. As you, as you know, right? you, somebody asked to book the show for me. And yeah. I knew, I, I'd looked up Bandway and the greats that they, uh, I spoke to them uh, um, afterwards and we're going to hopefully have them on the show as well uh, at some point once. Really? I was just going to get my, I uh, just finally caught up with everything um, yesterday, I think. Now I'm just starting to reach out to uh, book some other some acts so they're going to be on so that'll be that'll be fun hopefully that works out uh, they're in the uk so it'll be a late night for them uh, eight nine uh, area uh, time mm -hmm. for them um and well, we're going to do a home concert here at the castle uh, yeah. i've decided that's it. let's do it 
And yeah, let's do it. Like, let's plan yeah, for so, November. And it was kind of a little unnerving because I'd heard them online, you know, the, the recorded material, which, which everybody sounds wonderful in the recorded material. But they sounded fantastic live. Um, but it was, there was three of them. There was a, um, one of them played bass, one played uh, um, rhythm guitar. Then they had I was like, a cahoon, the, the box, with some guy sitting in the box with like actors as drums. I think it's called a cahoon, I think. Um, so there was the three of them. And then I'm me as a solo act with my one guitar. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to sound a little empty. As you think, I, was like, I should be opening for them. Um, it all turned out well. Um, it was a, it ended up being a very limited, not limited, um, intimate room. So it's a, um, that's yeah. not not much different from Joe Black Coffee Bar, if anyone, if you've been there or if anyone else has been there. Uh, it's probably a little bit smaller, actually. But it was a bar, lots of drinking going on. Um, the tables were lined up. Uh, the benches, really, were, were lined up in a row, almost, almost theater seating. And it was packed for most of the night. But it was a bar, so people come in. Have a, have a drink, maybe two, listen to three or four songs and leave. But mm -hmm. yeah, at the end of every song, I mean, it was like the audience was alive and shouting and cheering and like, and like a coffee, I like Joe Black's, which I love playing there as well, where people will go and then back to the conversation, right? Yeah. But uh, people, were, yeah. people were watching and listening. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And, That's a great feeling, yeah, hey? Yeah. I know and, what you're talking about. I and, love that feeling. And I, I think it's one of my better, best life, life performances, in my opinion, um, is that and the reason I think is because we had such a great sound. We, we it was, um, you know, the speakers, on, it was speakers on a stick. So the speakers were right up here. And I was saying, yeah. a little bit in front of them. And they were just balanced so beautifully. And I could hear my guitar and I could hear my voice. So I could hit those, I could hit those powerful high notes and I could still hear myself and I could hear the guitar. Whereas usually if I'm in a coffee bar, everything's toned down and I hit a high note and I'm yeah. like, I hope I'm holding it. <laughs> and yeah. then you back off a little bit, right? But I was able to just give it everything. Um, and yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I walked away. You know what I really way. like? I like this screen right now where I'm above you and I'm kind of looking Oh, down. looking down. That's what it should be. All right. Look at that. That's a good. We should keep it like that. No, we won't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, just one more time. One more time. There we go. Right, right. I'm like the claw. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay, it's getting silly now. I, I, we had a hundred uh, viewers, but then when we did that, we had like none. Uh, they've all no, just kidding. Oh no, no, I ruined. <laughs> yeah, we are. That's so funny. Yeah, we are. Where's Phil? Oh, there's Phil. Phil's back. Oh, is he back? He's back. Unmute yourself, Phil, and say hello. Hi, Phil. Yeah. He's not going to unmute himself. Oh, he's not. He doesn't have his microphone on yet. We're rushing him. Okay, we're rushing Sorry, him. Sorry, he's okay. back from a meeting. Yep. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm back. Hey, hey Phil, are you not? <laughs> well, we can't let uh, Phil. Uh oh, hang on. Come I back without. Hey, well, Phil. On. Hey, I can't hear anything. hey, Phil. Here we go. We got to do your title sequence here. Oopsies! I skipped Oopsies. just a little bit there. Wee! No retakes. No redos. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Phil's free for all. Okay. Hey. Do you have anything? Do you have anything oh planned? God, I, love <laughs> I love that. Is I that need cool? my own fucking person. <laughs> no, that's your own person. I am. I am a co-host now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! You guys, it's been exciting here for me this summer. Yep. What are you going to say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. I've we, we haven't actually spoke for uh, for a while. I think it was been a it's been a good month. I think since we had a good chat. Um, and I know you have switched radio okay. stations. Yep. Something happened with yeah. HGB Canada. Um, yeah. So give us the lowdown. What's going on oh, with the Colorado look, Phil show? It's like we've got Canada, U.S. English, but you guys aren't wearing the right t-shirts. Wait. <laughs> I'm wearing the show t-shirt. Hey, I don't have boobs, so. <laughs> well, I do, but I'm not going to show them to you. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> there. I'm not go. wearing mine now because I'm wearing it tomorrow. The I'm land of a. <laughs> okay, well, Phil got to have his little break, and I haven't stopped talking, so I'm going to just go have my little break while Phil talks now. So if you hey. don't hear from me, you'll know him. All right. Okay. Sounds good. I just want to bring up some stuff that people could check out. Like, um, well, the station I'm on now, Virtuosity Worldwide. Uh, Which I love, by the way. Thank you. Um, VW Radio, they're amazing. They're 100% behind the show, behind my ideas and stuff like that. Yesterday, we did the world premiere of uh, a new single by an artist called Pam Taylor. Okay. And it's called Rising Sun. It's it's a cover. Um, but it was featured in, um, in a movie called Fate 
alchemy. And it's okay. one, a lot of awards, it's actually still on the um, film um, circuit, you know, the... Um, yeah. Is it um? Is it, is this like an independent movie or is it a Hollywood? Apparently? I do believe so. Yeah. So yeah, Fate Alchemy. Yeah. Oh, hey, yesterday I had a lot of people listening in, or uh, yeah, yesterday. Um, it was uh, a lot of people follow her. Is what I'll say to that. And then I had the honor and the privilege, and I don't have it on my screen, but uh, I went to a double album um release party okay. for a couple of bands that people should check out like r and B, I I suppose although i don't like putting labels and stuff if i like it i like it so i'll say i love them it was uh, cass clayton um and uh carrie pastine and the crime scene i play them a lot on the show as well okay. um so that was fun and i did go to a taste of colorado uh, which was great. Uh, it's all centered in the downtown Denver by the Capitol building and all that. It looks really cool. Um, I was there for a Remus Tucker band from Denver. Uh, it's a kick-ass country band. But Dwight Yoakam was there that night. Right. <laughs> uh, but I never saw him. I don't know where the heck his stage was. But right. it's been an exciting summer. And I'm glad I'm, I'm on VW Radio now. I tell you that much. <laughs> and I was going to say something else too. Well, like, just, so, just for viewers, uh, uh, get, just for people watching there, uh, if you uh, go to the like, viewvradio.co, not .com, uh, and then click on the um, shows um, button there at the top and fills mm -hmm. in the list there. Um, I think, was it uh, one to five every day? Mountain time? Yeah, um, yeah. I can run through it just like this. It's like go, I do, do it, it man. Do it. Uh, 12 to 4 p.m. Pacific. 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time here in Colorado, 2 to 6 p.m. Central Time in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time um, in, well, out east. Monday through Friday, www.vwradio.co. Really easy. Check out my show page, like uh, Mark was saying. Under the Shows tab, click on the Colorado Phil Show, and... Um, Check out the nice page they made for me. Like, uh, there's a yeah. picture, a poster of the show, and to the left of that is the player. And we play a lot of Winnipeg music. Um, if there's time later after Luz comes back, I'll take a little break and uh, look up some of the new Winnipeg bands that I've got on rotation here yeah. that are really getting a good uh, uh, reaction. And that's kind of exciting. Um, and I'm also referring, I take music. Um, Mark, you'll know about this, right? The the importance of properly labeling music, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so I've been doing the show for almost three years. Now, I won't name the station, but the other station let me go for over two years. Nobody I played, the, nobody's music that I played, personally from me, that nobody got paid for that play. Because of why I added, after the artist name, out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And that gets... Uh, blocked, you know, mm. and the, the uh, what's it called? The, the one eighth of a penny doesn't go to the artist, the royalty. So I, I'm kind of pissed off about that. Yeah. But uh, at my new station that I'm at, VW Radio, uh, Colorado Kim has a plan. We're going to try to educate artists about the importance of labeling their music properly so that they get paid because she pays money to be uh, registered yeah. on all the different. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you guys call those. So what? The was that? Isn't that? Are you talking? About, are you talking about how you code a CD? What from each track has its own individual code, that when it gets played, it can be recorded, and, and um, you don't have that on your. See, it's good. I think it's, yes. yes. it's good that you're here, Carrie. Uh, Luz. Oh, she's gonna kill me. Okay, and Mark. <laughs> no. Um, call me David. No, I'm just kidding. Because we, we should arrange uh, to have uh, Colorado Kim, the owner of the station. Any relation? No. Oh, okay. Well, she lives in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> she lives in Grand Junction on the other side of the mountains. But uh, that yeah, we should have and we should have industry people yes. on that way that can talk. Because I can't really do it. I, I play the music, okay? And I was really pissed we, we off did. when she informed me that everything I played, nobody's been paid. And that pisses me off because that's why I do it. And it turns out that's why she started her station. 
because right. and she well, pays then... she pays the, the the companies or whatever and we're gonna start uh, soon um an education campaign so i think we should have her on the show yeah absolutely Sounds good to me let's do it I'll try to talk her into it. She's not a big camera person. But. Uh, you know what? We, uh, if uh, that's a real problem, um, we can do the what we did with uh, Roberts um, at well in February, I think. Uh, he didn't have a camera, so we just put a, a picture of him up. So if she oh, wants to do that, go, yeah. we can do that too. So there's ways around oh, that. If there's that'll work. Yeah. So there are ways because I mean, that. I'm serious. Like I know about it a bit, but I didn't know that me just because she liked that when I started at her station, yep. she loved that because it shows up on our app. Yep. You know, and people dig that, knowing where the artist is from. But now every day I load every sign I take out out of. Yep. <laughs> but I'm finding too many artists don't even have the album title. You know, yep. all this properly done. Like, so yeah, we yeah. got. It. In, in coding a CD properly, there's yep. the name of the track, there's the name of your band, there's the mm -hmm. track code, there's the tracking code for royalties. There's a lot of things that go Yeah, on. and uh, we're both passionate about that. Well, Luce is passionate there's about it too. We love to get paid. On the spot, it has to be a certain way. There's lots of little intricacies yep. to have it done properly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that'll be fun. Uh, it's good, and we want to educate people. So it'd be good with Luce to. Uh, you know, you guys are in Manitoba, so maybe Manitoba artists will start paying attention because I've got a lot of new artists, but I'm going to let you guys talk and I'm going to find them so I can give them a shout out yep, before good. we okay, stop. We, um, that, that's a good point. You know, when when it comes, like we are trying to help Manitoba artists and we are trying to help Canadian artists in a couple ways, of course, with the movie uh, that Ken Loxton just um, produced and put out called Canadian Homegrown, which I believe is being turned into a series um, that will highlight Canadian homegrown music. And, you know, part of that series it, um, was really about asking the questions, like what's happened in our music industry, in live music in the past like 20 years? How has it changed? What's happening now that hinders us? What has helped us? How can we band together and create something better for Canadian artists, local Manitoba right. artists? You know, we do have things put into place that then it's not helping anybody. It only helps the people that work for the organizations, to be yeah, honest. I'm exactly. not, it's not a complaint. It's just the way it is. Sometimes that's what happens. Um, but there's not been a lot of forum, radio, video, or otherwise for local Canadian music. And, you know, you remember back in the radio days in the 60s and the 70s and even into the 80s cancon was like canadian content was all yep. uber important in the country canadian artists were always i know all the bands from the 60s and 70s and 80s even like how you don't you know them all yep. because that's what was got got favored in our country first and then everything else came out as well it's not like we were missing on international music but we got dedicated time and people respected yep. that and you know it's not a political rant either but you get into certain conservative governments and they don't support these kinds of things and little by little that gets weeded yep. away and i don't hear much canadian on any radio stations yep. to be honest like not not the same way so it would be wonderful to have something focused and balanced yep. for canadian music why not we're canada it's not like yep. I'm not trying to have a disadvantage we're just trying to have an equal than advantage you know so i i hope that out of ken's uh, questioning and yep. uh, talking to the bands and i'll tell you the bands and that that first pilot we did i mean load included but mm -hmm. i'm in awe of the other bands we played with amazing talent in in canada there should be more focus on helping us yeah yeah absolutely um yeah i know i've uh i've reached out a couple of times uh, i think bands over music and you know, they've been helpful um on some areas, not so much on others. A uh, part of the part never, uh, they've never been helpful oh. to us, yeah. not once. Yeah, um, and and, 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 and just most recently, I was so disappointed in um, you know we're Manitoba band, and yeah. we've been a part of Manitoba Film and Sound for a long time, and then Manitoba Music we were, and I guess we I guess uh, we let something lapse and we're not on the calendar for them anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we can't, we're not allowed to be involved in any Manitoba music projects this year. And mm -hmm. like Lode's been a Manitoba, 
projects since yeah. 1996. Like, yeah. how do you do that? Yeah. You know, let us pay our fee or, you know, let us get in. But we're, like, we are just, we've been treated very poorly, I believe, by yeah. the people in Manitoba yeah. music. So that's, you know, that, and I'm just, it's not sour grapes. It's just, it's the luck of the draw. It's rules how it is. It's right. real life. You know, musicians struggle. Manitoba musicians don't have it easy. You know, they have real lives and things that interfere. And what you would like to see is people like Manitoba Music help musicians yeah. and acts, not just be there for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. To call yourself Manitoba Music. And that's the problem in our industry right now, is that there's a lot of people who just say that they're there and they collect mm -hmm. either money from the government or they've created a job, but they're they're not really helping the people they're helping themselves right. so you are amazing in helping people well, fill like, what dedicated to helping <laughs> yeah. people like, you heard other, you know, so many people here coming together that it's like well i guess we were waiting to have other people look after us no. or or take care of our best interests and then we realize well there is no other person better than us so let's yeah. let's come together so yeah, for sure <laughs> Some people think it's a bitch, right? Like it's a gripe, but it's not. It's a way to recognize a few faults and a few um, people taking advantage of musicians and their authority in this matter. And the good people will rise up and control of that. And I think Manitoba Music, as a, not the organization, but Manitoba musicians, mm -hmm. have a great opportunity to lead this country yeah. in the best music. Okay. And that. Hey, you know what? Um, I'm I talked to uh, Kim already at the station about this and she said if I come up with an idea of some kind <clears throat> to promote Manitoba music especially during that battle thing uh, something permanent on my actual um, station page uh, so we'll be doing that like see the question you know that so the question is why are we doing something for Manitoba music and Manitoba music isn't doing anything for me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why I do. When they're supposed to be an organization being thoughtful and provocative and, and forward thinking that we should be doing like great things with, with music. We should be, they, I believe they collect fees. Oh yeah. Okay. To be a part of their organization and um, like, let's collect fees and do something other than just pay for those jobs. Let's like right. actually promote music. Do something. Actually, uh, Shalim so is, has asked. Uh, uh, Shalim has actually made us. So just want to interrupt. Uh, Shalim uh, is uh, just made, made a statement. There. So hi, Shalim. Thanks for joining us. Uh, he says, "I wonder if because there are so many choices for entertainment that it's harder to grow a local scene." Uh, this is uh, happening at the same time that there are more artists making music and releasing products than ever before. Yeah. So I think that's a yes. Um, and it does go to your yeah, point. It yeah, kind of does go to your point. I think that, uh, a lot of people no, are just like um, <clears throat> automatically they turn on the radio in the car and it's either AM or FM or whatever, right? Whatever's there. They have no idea what's in their own backyards. Yeah. Well, and then in our in the documentary, we did just we tried to ask, well, why? I mean, you know, it started when laws changed for smoking in clubs for. Yeah certain like and drinking and driving laws and things and i'm not complaining i'm not saying those are a bad thing but they certainly were the first step to the downfall of live music in a lot of establishments because the rules changed and people that want to enjoy certain things can't when they're out spending their own money and they want you know like what can you say so there was that and then like something happened in the industry with the bars where Bands used to be coveted, and you'd want to have a bar play a band play for a week. Right, yeah. That band would make enough money in that week that they could all live, pay their mortgage, pay their food. If they had a family, it was okay. And if they didn't, they could do whatever the hell they wanted. It was a, a good life. And then something just like happened where, well, the laws change for <laughs> people enjoying themselves in bars. That's what happened. And then yeah. Owners of bars and, and clubs became like um like they were the prestigious ones and that the band had to bring all these people to their restaurant. They expected the band to provide the restaurant or the bar with patrons. And then if that didn't work out because maybe money the 
people ask too much money for that. You know, you want to bring a big following. There. Yeah. So, but the other thing that, that, that I personally notice is that in a lot of bars, whatever restaurants where there, there could easily be live music, they're playing mainstream yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, well, so people really don't know, but I, if people would take the Colorado Phil Show Challenge, like for example, yesterday's show, if they force themselves to listen to the whole four hours and just leave their mind open, they wouldn't know they weren't listening to mainstream artists. But they hear amazing music. They just exactly. They're used to, but they would become used to it because if you hear it three or four times, it becomes mainstream to you. Yep. And that's what's missing. Like, that's the thing. So now... I do believe that uh, in Winnipeg, 97 Rock um, has a program on Mondays called, oh shoot, Manit it's not Manitoba Mondays, ma Mandatory Monday maybe, or Manitoba, Mandatory Manitoba, God forbid, I'm sorry that I uh, <laughs> don't have it down there. but I, I don't know if it was from the documentary, but the timing is very suspect that right after the documentary, um, the radio program started happening so i haven't heard that loads on it yet I've, uh, hey I, I, before we end i want to shout out to some new winnipeg bands that i have on rotation and i want to add that when people are emailing me music direct i respond every time and i ask them to go to our website which we can give out later and submit their music there for general rotation because then uh, the way she has it set up, I'm pretty sure it'll be foolproof, you know? If you're registered, if your music is registered, however that works there. Yeah. Um, and then they play it and you, whatever comes to you, comes to you kind of thing. But uh, uh, it's all in the mind, load. Yes. But I got some brand new bands <laughs> uh, like Chronic Pain. Um, Amadians, I think it's, I think you say Amadians, A-M-A-T-I-A-N-S. Uh, Johnny Langan. The Jerry Hattricks, Black Eyed Susie, Turner Phrase, J.C. Campbell, and the Mariachi Ghost, and, and I'm forgetting some. <laughs> you know, Lowe's played the Mariachi Ghost a few times. They're an exquisite band. Oh, yesterday I opened the show with a song from uh, Playing As Ghosts. I forget the yeah. title of it. It fucking it's kicks ass. I'm, I told you. I told it's got you a there. little bit of uh, hip-hop in there. Yeah. <gasps> it gives me goosebumps now. Woo! <laughs> well, I'm glad no, I, I like that too. I, you know, and honestly, I can I can say this. I I don't like I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing or if I'm admitting something. You know, I I write music. I've we've released four CDs and load and performed and worked in a lot of film and video. And so, like sometimes, you know, and maybe you both can attest to this. When you are writing music, you're not necessarily listening to music. Now, maybe some other people are. I guess I listen to music, I get inspired, and then I'm writing music, and then I'm not listening to music. And so I've been writing an album for the last three years, and I, I didn't know some of these. And also I travel a lot, and I have three children, and I live in two countries. So yeah. I what, I actually listen to a lot more music when I'm in Mexico yeah. than because my lifestyle is different than when I'm in Canada. Mm -hmm. And so I get a little bit behind on the Canadian and North American scene, but I'm like right up there on like all the Latino and cool hip-hop and stuff from down there. And so, you know, I I – these things open my mind too to make sure that I support Canadian music, not just myself. Like I, I, I demand that from the public and I have to make sure I do it myself too, you know? And so like, I was so blessed to, to um, just get to see some great Canadian and Manitoba acts over the last six months doing this video and working with you guys and just having my, and also my kids are a little older. So I get, I can actually go out, not just to perform, not just, my stuff, but I get to actually have some time right. and that's like you know how life gets in the way and then timing changes so there are there's just amazing musicians in this province oh and yeah I think they deserve, oh, yeah. deserve us talking about them and Phil you're amazing and and Mark honestly the work you guys are doing are great thank you so much yeah, for, on behalf you. of everybody well, it's so you. much fun and we do it because yeah. we love it um yeah. Hey, actually, hey, uh, and I've been getting, just keeping on the time here, uh, I've been getting compliments about the uh, battle hour that I do about Manitoba music. I love your battle hour two hundred four. I'm like, and you know the the shitty thing about Facebook is that I don't like, I don't always get notified, and yeah. I'm not there always looking, right? Because yeah. you 
big list, list of followers and, and you all of a sudden you get posts that you weren't expecting and you miss the ones that you are. But every time I see those two or four, you post them to me, I just laugh. I just love that. <laughs> You are so funny to do that, and it's always like two or four against the Colorado. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We're awesome. hey, but you know what? It, it's getting traction even here. And um, like when we went to uh, the double album release for Cass Clayton and Carrie Pastine in the crime scene, a young guy that works there uh, said, "Excuse," he was super busy. He said, "Excuse me, are you Colorado Phil?" <laughs> And I said, yeah, yeah, I am. And then he had to go, but he said, he was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is happening more in the uh, local scene. And I love that. And I'm getting messages from Winnipeg people like, right on. I love how you're doing this. And I don't deny it. I'm a, like a walking megaphone. I mean, seriously. Well, let's find a way to be able to at least um, put your 204 challenge on the load TV channel. I'm working yeah. that up. Yeah. I do it. I start doing it. Um, men, I'm going to make my exit. Yep. Actually, I was always. just going to, I was just going to close up. Let's oh, actually, oh, let's yeah, close yeah, up nice now. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, we've got uh, so anyone that's interested there uh, um, can contact uh, Luce, uh, looseoverload at gmail, looseoverload.com is the uh, web, web address. And of course, you can check out uh, the, the um, new CD as well, or loads of new CD as well. And uh, of course, on Facebook as well. Uh, hey, who's that? That was Kat. Kat that was Kat. Hi. 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can get and get. Uh, um, me and Phil on on Twitter. That's a very written from bottom up. Uh, uh, you're already watching on Facebook if you're watching this live. But uh, the Colorado Phil show is where the mainstream is uh, is goes goes out. You can catch Phil on the www.vradio.ca. Sorry, dot co, not c a c o. And uh, for every new all the news about the Invisible Man, you can just check out our website www.theinvisibleman.ca. So Bye. let's so let's get back, okay. And that's we're done as well. So uh, we will just uh, say thanks for everyone, and we will catch you in a couple of weeks. We'll have Ken Loxton on the twelfth. It's going to be a lot of fun, and then we we'll do lots of promotion on that as well. I'm going to be on the sidelines for that one. Don't you forget. Bye. <laughs> thanks for everyone, man. Bye. Thanks. Have a good one. Holy invisible.